Hello and welcome to the Essential Guide to Year 11. My name is Mr Dennis, one of the Assistant Principals at the Academy. In this presentation we'll be talking through a lot of important information that students in Year 11 need to know as they undertake their final year of their GCSE studies. Hello everyone, it's Mrs Burns here. This feels very strange. I'd normally be saying how lovely it is to see you all again and obviously that's not possible at the moment. It has however been absolutely amazing to see all the students back. They've coped really well with the transition into year 11 and have adapted to the new normal that we're currently in and I can only hope that they go continue to go from strength to strength throughout the year. I can't believe we're in the last leg now. It seems a very long time since that first day, part way through year eight when I joined them. This year is vital for their future. And in the uncertain times that we're in, we're, we've obviously put a huge amount of planning in to ensure that we keep life as normal as possible and we offer the same support we always have to Year 11s. There is a huge amount of support available in school, as some of you will have already accessed already, both pastorally um, and academically and my big message really to students this year is to make every second count more so now than ever they need to make sure they ask for help whether that be in class with revision with homework or with emotional well-being help is there and we're encouraging them day on day just to accept any help and ask for any help that they may need. Um, we also will be encouraging them to attend all intervention support that's available um, and really making sure that they're aware that we do have plenty of time, we can address everything we need to throughout year 11 but we do now more than ever need to make every second count. So your support is vital for that so thank you ever so much for your support up to date and please do contact me if there's anything I can do to support your child further. Thank you. It's worth mentioning our results because ultimately this is what we're working towards in terms of young people being successful and getting fantastic results at the end of their GCSEs to enable them to move on to the next stage of their lives. This year obviously was slightly different, what with the current coronavirus situation, in that students were given centre assessed grades which were based on the grades that teachers felt students would most likely achieve. These are listed on this slide, however it is worth noting that these are consistent with the results that our students get year in year out and again are very very pleasing and we are always very very proud of the results that our students get every year. It's important to remain positive. It is going to be a difficult few years for students. It's a very, very stressful time, or it can be, and there's going to be lots of challenges ahead. But remaining positive is something that is very, very important. Working together, both with you as parents, and the academy, and teachers, and form tutors, to make sure that we are always thinking about the positives, to make sure that we are always trying to get the most positive outcomes for our students. So how else can you as a parent help support this process? Firstly, we keep talking about online behavior, social media, but again, try and set some boundaries for this, try and set something that is used as a reward or an incentive after students have completed homework or revision or studying for that day. Ensure obviously pupils are spending time with positive people. That's obviously yourselves, but also peers as well. It's very, very easy to fall into bad habits if your peers are doing the same. Check your uh, child's planner every day. Again, make sure what homework they've got and that they are completing it. And provide them, if possible, with a quiet and calm space for them to work. Perhaps involving other people, study partners, perhaps online nowadays, what with the current situation, maybe doing something over Zoom or Microsoft Teams with 
their uh, peers might also be a positive thing said earlier about remaining positive being calm as well is also something it's very easy to get annoyed or wound up if students or your children aren't doing their homework or aren't revising but again try and remain calm and positive to encourage them also work with us as mentioned earlier if you have any concerns about a specific subject please contact the relevant head of department or teacher so the first subject I'm going to speak to you about is English language, as it's essential that students get this GCSE to be able to go on to study at a higher level. The best way for students to practice is to complete questions in timed conditions at home, because this is often what students find the trickiest thing in the exam situation. We have lots of practice questions on the school website under the English revision section, which you can see right now on your screen. The first three documents are specific to English language, and the first one goes through how to approach all of the questions on the papers with examples as well. The second two contain practice papers which students can work through in their own time and if they bring these into school the teachers will be happy to mark them for them. So as well as this students should have planned and written three stories before their exams. They can edit these in the exam to match the titles they're given to choose from and practicing writing these stories out at home in time conditions is also an excellent way of revising. So for example we might ask our students to write about a time that they found themselves in trouble and then they would simply need to adapt that story to some of the titles given to them in the exam situation. Vocabulary is also really, really important, particularly for our students who are aiming for those top grades. A new word of the day or reading newspapers, even online on phones, is a great way of developing and expanding vocabulary. If they're using that extensive vocabulary, they're going to stand out to those examiners. Students will also be given homework booklets this year and they contain a variety of practice questions for students to work through. So reminding them of this would also be greatly appreciated. And finally, for English language, students need to make sure they revise the format and the content of the different non-fiction writing forms. Again, a summary of those can be found on the English revision section of the school website in that first document. This will go through all the different types of non-fiction writing they will need to do, from letters to articles to report writing. So it's essential that students understand the requirements of these. Moving on to English literature revision now, so it's essential that the students begin learning the quotations from our key text nice and early. If they leave it all to the last minute, they're going to panic and it will really be a hard task to get them stuck in their brains before the exams. So we teach students to chunk the quotations, which is essentially where they learn a key word from each of them to help the process of recall. The best and easiest way to do this is either verbally using the look cover check method or having them write them out, so thinking back to when they were learning spellings when they were at primary school. They get given booklets with these in, so please encourage them to use them and perhaps even get involved and test them at home. Students can get a long way knowing the plot of the text inside out, so if possible, having a copy of the book at home and getting them to reread it is going to be really, really good practice for them to know that plot. We study in Inspector Calls, Jekyll and Hyde and Macbeth. Students have a full copy of the Macbeth text, which they annotated in class last year, and we'll make sure they have that at home. And they also have key extracts from an Inspector Calls and Jekyll and Hyde from the booklets that they'll be given this year in year 11. GCSE Pod is also a great way for them to revise. It's got hundreds of videos on and all of the literature texts, including those poems. However, just a reminder that we won't need to study the poems this year because that's the component that we're dropping as an academy. So when they watch these videos, they can be making notes on them, but we will also be setting them assignments uh, for them to complete at home as homework. These have all got bespoke questions that teachers have created for our academy to test the students on the knowledge that we specifically would like them to know. Moving back to the English Revision website, if you have a look here, we've got many, many resources. So the first four literature documents contain a wealth of revision materials. Students can also find practice literature questions towards the end of each of those. Even planning responses rather than writing out the full essay will take them a long way. A reminder again that the students don't need to look at the poetry anthology aspects this year so they can skip over those on the website. 
you can then see that the next three documents are all key quotations from this year's set text, which they can also find in their booklets. But it's essential, as I've said, that students know these quotations before the exams. Hi, I'm Mr Dobson, Head of Maths at Garth Academy. I'd just like to talk you through the key points for Year 11 this year. Um, this year we have three sets of mocks. The first set of mocks is in October, followed by the next set in December 2020, and the next set next year in March 2021. Each maths mock will have three papers. Paper one is a non-calculator paper, and papers two and three, both you're allowed to use a calculator. Um, all students should have a full set of equipment for every lesson, as well as having a scientific calculator um, for the lessons as well. Um, your maths GCSEs will have two tiers. So at the moment, sets one to three um, will follow the higher paper, and that gives you access to grades three to nine. And the foundation tier are sets four, five, six, and seven, and that gives you access to grades one up to grade four. Five. How can your child improve and reach their potential this year? Um, just go through the following points, and this should help your child achieve the best grade they possibly can in maths this year. Um, we have revision sessions which run every Thursday, which have already started. So your son and daughter's maths teacher should have spoken to them about revision sessions, which are welcome to all students. Um, which run after school on a Thursday, and that's every single week. Um, they will also be getting homework every week um, by completing Hegarty tasks. Um, so you could support your child by checking that they've done that homework, um, as well as any help that they need. Um, they're also able to ask questions to their tutor um, via Hegarty as well. The following websites would give um, some extra help and some extra explanations for your child. Um, Corbett Maths, it's got five questions every day, which is excellent practice. Um, on Maths also gives exam questions and papers. MyMaths.co.uk, which you can get the password from your tutor. And Access Maths as well has a wealth of um, worksheets and examples for your child to try. After each mock, we will complete a QLA, a question-led analysis, that will help identify each pupil's strengths and weaknesses. So again, if you could use that to help revise, and again, that will help you practice the topics that you found difficult um, on the mocks and in lessons and in general. And please speak to your tutor if you have any issues about any of the topics that you find difficult, and if you need any more websites or resources. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is Mr. Rag, and I'm Head of Science at Garforth Academy. It's going to take a few minutes just to talk through some of the important points of how the GCSE fits together and how we can help prepare our students, your children, to do the best they possibly can in the exam. As you can see from this slide, the most important thing is revising the right content for the right exam. It doesn't matter how well you prepared or how much revision you've done if you're revising the wrong material for the wrong day. Regardless of the route, your son or daughter takes through GCSE Science, whether that be foundation tier, higher tier, the combined course, sometimes called Trilogy, or the separate science GCSE course, they will all do six papers, two biology, two chemistry, and two physics. This slide shows the breakdown of topics for the combined course. So for example, in biology, paper one topics are one to four, cell biology, organization, infection response, and bioenergetics. You can see those on the previous slide. The main difference between combined and separate is the number of GCSE grades you get. In combined science, you get a double grade, such as a double five or a double six. You can also get a grade in between. You could be awarded a six five or a five four. This slide shows the breakdown of topics for the separate science GCSE course. If your son and daughter is studying separate sciences, they will receive one GCSE in biology, one GCSE in chemistry, and one GCSE in physics. And at first glance, the topic breakdown doesn't look a lot different to the combined course. The big difference is physics has an extra unit eight assessed in paper two. That's called space physics. The exams are a little bit longer too. There's an extra half an hour and an extra 30 marks to, to, tagged on the end. 
and each exam makes up 50% of the GCSE course. As I said on the first slide, revising the right content for the right exam is key to doing well in GCSE science. We'd recommend revision guides, workbooks and other materials from CGP. They're good value for money and there are lots of different resources available depending on your style of learning. They offer revision cards, revision guides, workbooks, knowledge organisers and retrieval workbooks, as well as textbooks and online access to their app. You can pick these up via the website that's listed in front of you, or you might be able to get a second hand version via Amazon, eBay or other suppliers online. Please, please, please make sure you buy the correct guide for the correct exam board. We do GCSE 9 to 1 AQA and our combined course is called Trilogy, not Synergy. You might also find these websites useful. The exam board aqa.org.uk subjects slash science slash GCSE has lots of information about what will be assessed on what particular exam as well as in-depth guides that we use to actually deliver the content. BBC Bite Size is excellent. It mirrors the GCSE course and the exam board and has lots of quick tests, videos and content to revise from. Other websites such as getrevising.co.uk are excellent and YouTube has lots of clips that cover the entire qualification. In Science Department, we use GCSE Pod and Educate to set homework. These can also be used as a self-study tool or to set yourself quick quizzes at home. Your son and daughter should know how to do this. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me via email. And I can be found at ragj at garfordacademy.org.uk. Thank you. Hi, Year 11. Within Geography, there's loads of information for you to find out on the internet, through school, through the revision guides, that will be able to help you with your revision. These two revision guides on here are really, really good in terms of revision and practice questions. Um, emails have been sent home over the past couple of weeks about these. There is still time if you're wanting to purchase one of these revision guides, you can do. So just contact one of your um, geography teachers or if you want to, um, you can come and um, find me, uh, Mrs Matthew, within the geography office. Like I said before, there is a lot of stuff online that can help you with your revision. There is um, the CPG revision guide, which we spoke about. Um, you can access that online as well. So if you do purchase the revision guide, it gives you a special code to access all of that online. So you can do that on your phone, um, you can do that on iPad, etc. You can um, be able to access it on the internet. We've then got websites. Um, BBC Bite Size is really, really good. Just make sure that when you are looking on BBC Bite Size that you are following the AQA curriculum, the geography, because that's the one that we follow within school. We also have um, Time for Geography websites and Cool Geography. Again, these are really good um, visually to get a bit of uh, understanding about different topics, especially the formations of coasts and rivers. GCSE pod, your teachers will be going through GCSE pod with you. They'll be setting work on GCSE pod, but you're more than welcome to go on there as well and find lots of information revised for all of your subjects on there as well. Good evening, everyone. Um, I've often been asked over the years how students should best revise for history. Um, and my advice has, hasn't really changed over the, the many years I've been teaching now. First of all, students have to do some revision at home. And the misconception is that if students are reading um, a study guide, reading their notes, reading an exercise book or a textbook, they think they are revising. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't always work like that. There needs to be an element of questioning and of the brain having to come up with a response or an answer in order for that information to actually move from uh, from the working memory to the long term memory so that then that can be retrieved again for uh, the examinations. So my first tip then is that students must complete some independent revision 
and it must be in the form of asking questions and answering questions. Um, to sit and read notes is is not good enough. That that's not going to work uh, for for the vast majority of students. Um, the revision guides that we uh, have put on offer for students, and most most of our pupils have these revision guides. Um, they they can be used in a number of ways. So they, you can read the information on the pages, of course, but then the questions at the bottom are absolutely key. Ideally, students would answer these questions on paper, but again, they can, these can be done in your head. The point is that students are actually thinking about the question and then being able to use the information they've just read to answer that question. That is absolutely key. Intervention sessions are offered and again these are really useful, um, they're after school, they're often uh, a bit more relaxed, a bit more informal than, than uh, everyday class teaching and even if uh, students come once a fortnight there may be something mentioned or um, we cover something that a, a, a classroom teacher has said in a slightly different way um, and all of a sudden now that, that, that really makes sense. So intervention can make a big difference for a lot of students. Another uh, point to make is, and this may seem obvious, but in history we only have uh, two or three questions per paper. And in the um, Elizabeth exam, for example, there are only actually three questions that students answer. Therefore, it's absolutely crucial that students answer every question. Sometimes it's difficult, especially if there is a topic or um, a phrase perhaps that students don't necessarily uh, remember or can't remember straight away. But we will be teaching lots of different techniques um, about how to then put something down in their answer, which will at least gain them a couple of, uh, couple of marks. Examiners are always encouraged to uh, award marks where possible. So if there is something down on the paper, then it is likely that, that students will gain a mark or two. And finally, I'm sure everyone said this um, uh, along this PowerPoint, please don't give up. There will be times over the next six months when things become very, very difficult, but you just have to keep going. I really am a, a, a big fan of chunking revision, so I would set myself no more than 40, 45 minutes. I'd put my uh, alarm on my phone and I would start on something. And again, that's crucial for a lot of our students. They, they can get bogged down in, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. Should I do this? The point is do something. So choose one topic, one idea. It might be, if it's the medicine exam for us, it might be say Louis Pasteur and 45 minutes, you're gonna read about Louis Pasteur, write down what you know, and then attempt one of the um, exam style questions. But th that's absolutely crucial to do something. Um, good luck with everything. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mrs. Campling, Head of MFL, and I'd like to talk to you about the, this year's GCSE French and Spanish exams. As usual, there, are no, there is no coursework and all the exams are marked by AQA. There is no mixed entry, so students must sit all foundation or all higher papers. The foundation paper uh, is graded one to five and the higher paper is graded three to nine. On the exam certificate, there is no information regarding which paper students sat. So if a student sat a foundation and got a five, all that I would say is a grade five and vice versa. As you can see on the PowerPoint, there are three papers, listening, reading and writing, and each one is worth equal weighting. The big change just for this year's cohort is that there is no formal speaking exam in exam conditions. Students will instead receive a teacher endorsement, which will be based on speaking which is done in class and which the teacher has informally marked. We are still awaiting further clarification from AQA, but we believe a certificate will be issued alongside the exam grade, but will have no bearing on the overall exam grade. So, for example, if a student achieved, achieved a grade five in listening, reading and writing, 
this would be appear on the certificate. There would be an additional piece of information which says teacher endorsement and this is awarded at a pass, merit or distinction. After school support is available right now. We are doing the intervention every week uh, for both French and Spanish. Um, and students have access to online resources which include Language Nut and Caboodle. Any problems with any of those passwords, subject tutors can sort out without a problem. So a little bit of advice for Year 11 students uh, when it comes to preparing for their exams. Uh, and it's probably the same with any other subject, but don't leave it to the last minute. The easiest way to acquire and learn and remember a language is by doing it little and often. Vocabulary and grammar points need to be embedded over time. So five to ten minutes every evening on a different topic or theme would be really useful. And this could be done via language nut or by traditional methods. Uh, don't leave things to the last minute. Um, although we're not doing a speaking exam, uh, a formal speaking exam, uh, the work that students have done on their speaking questions in their speaking booklets is absolutely ideal preparation for the writing exam. It's really important that students don't just think, oh, I can forget about all of this work that we've done so far. Those paragraphs are the perfect way of getting high marks in the writing exam. And just as students would have learned the questions and answers for their speaking exam, if they learn them in the same way, they can be easily adapted and used for the writing exam. Intervention goes over exam skills, helps build uh, exam preparation in different skills such as the reading and listening and will also help students practice for the writing as well. Homework is part of revision and we try and tell students this all the time that homework is just as much part of the preparation for the final exams as their intervention classes so to speak so it's really important that students are doing homeworks to the best of their ability and if they're not they will be asked to repeat them to to get them right and that could be through attending intervention or by speaking with their with their teachers and making arrangements to see them and try and work it out together Mind maps are a really useful, practical way of seeing and recalling key vocabulary and phrases and students can work on this uh, for different topics and subtopics to help them recall that vital information. And there are also lots of language apps out there. I've, I've put a few of them on the board. Uh, most of them are, are free to use um, and are really good practice, especially for students who like using their technology to help. And a uh, final message from me is just really not to neglect the listening skills. Students tend to find these the hardest skills to access and therefore don't want to practice them when really they need to be practicing because they do find them the hardest. Via the apps, via Caboodle and Language Note, there are a variety of ways that students can practice this really important skill. And as it's equal weighting and it's worth 33% of the final exam, it could have a real um, make a real difference to overall outcomes. Thank you for listening and please don't hesitate to get in touch if you feel as if I can help, help any further. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mr Shuttleworth and I'm the head of the Business Studies Department. In Business Department we've found that one of the best revision tools is the OCR revision book which simplifies and condenses all the topics covered over the past two years for students. We have made this available through parent pay at a discounted price to help students and support them throughout their GCSEs. The guide also helps aid their revision and contains tasks that students can undertake additionally. We also use this within the class following up the run-up to exams to support their exam technique and preparations. Students will also see an increase in number of exam-based questions in the year, which will require them to focus on exam technique and corrections in order to improve their understanding. Finally, myself and Mr Owens will also conduct fortnightly intervention sessions on a Tuesday night, which will focus on gaps in knowledge, exam technique, and give students the opportunity to complete additional tasks outside the classroom to support their understanding and ability. Following this, we also will touch on topics that were concluded within the work due to lockdown and hope they help students understand aspects that they had to learn at home. Good evening everybody, Phil Sutcliffe here, Head of Design and Technology. I hope you're all well and looking after yourselves. 
So we're coming to a very important time in your child's life, preparation for their forthcoming GCSE exams. Lots of advice on the slide from the Design and Technology Department, but what I will say to you is it's important that your child takes plenty of rest and looks after themselves while revising. Now one of the things we strongly suggest in the Design and Technology Department is trialling the test papers which are on the school website which can be seen on this slide. There are lots of revision resources available at the moment. The ones that we recommend are the Collins Revision Books or the PG Online Clear Revise because those are the resources that we use in the department. I wish you and your child good luck and all the best for the future. For our GCSE sociologists, there are lots of opportunities to support your learning and revision. On the learning platform, there are a number of exam papers, mark schemes and revision guides to help you learn all those key concepts and theorists. Have a go at answering some of the exam questions and hand them to your teacher. Equally, there are a number of revision books you can buy and they have exam questions in them, tips on how to revise and subject content is consolidated to help you remember it better. Good luck guys. Good evening, my name is Lydia Binks and I'm the Head of the Education and Care Department. Mrs Fleming and I have a great Year 11 class this year who have returned to school focused, motivated and producing excellent work already. The, cl the class have one out of the three components already under their belts and have had their first attempt at the exam already. On the 4th of February they'll have their final opportunity to shine in the exam and we're expecting some excellent grades. We're working hard on revision for the exam and would ask that revision at home is also encouraged. Whilst there are limited published revision resources online due to the newness of the course, we are constantly uploading work to support revision, so please ask your child to keep their eyes on Teams. The group will have additional revision sessions after school throughout January for the exam and until Easter to support assignments in their final component. Good luck everybody. So the Cambridge Nationals Creative Eye Media course is made up of four different units one exam and three pieces of coursework. At the moment, students are currently completing and coming to the end of R82 Creating Digital Graphics. A deadline of October is in place for that particular unit. Once that is complete, they will then move on to exam preparation uh, with the exam taking place on the 11th of January. After they've undertaken the exam, there are two pieces of coursework to complete. One creating 2D and 3D digital characters, which involves creating cartoon characters. And the final unit is R87, which is about creating interactive multimedia products. I'd now like to talk about exams. There's some very important information in the next few slides which both yourselves and your children need to be aware of. This information will also be relayed to students via form time and in the lead up to exam periods as well and throughout the mock series that we do over years 10 and 11. Firstly, there are two types of courses. There are academic and vocational. Academic GCSEs are now graded 9 to 1, with 9 being the highest, and all have formal written exams which are externally marked, and the majority of these subjects are linear, meaning the exams are all taken at the end of Year 11. Other subjects that have a practical element still have some form of controlled assessment, such as in Art, Food, Music, P and Technology, where these units are teacher assessed and then they are externally moderated. There are no resits at GCSEs as all the exams are sat at the end of the course. It's really, really important that you know the dates and start times of exams are set by awarding bodies and not by us. These therefore are not flexible and therefore students need to be in school for these exams. Therefore any appointments or anything like that need to be arranged around these times and students will receive a provisional timetable usually in the February before the exams in the summer so that anything like this can be avoided. 
vocational subjects are graded from distinction star down to a level one pass with distinction star being the highest. These have coursework units throughout the course which are marked by the teacher and then externally moderated. They also now have formal written exams which are externally marked and unlike GCSEs these exams may be sat at different times throughout the year not just in the summer. So for these courses there often are reset opportunities available. Again though these are times that are set by the awarding bodies and again are not flexible. Certain things that students need to know which as I said previously they will be informed of in the lead up to exams but these are things that are non-negotiables. These are things that if students don't adhere to they risk being disqualified. So the first and most important one is that students are not allowed any sort of mobile phone or Apple watch in the exams. If they are caught with one they could be disqualified and this has happened in exams before. The students will just need to hand them in before exams and they'll be kept at reception safely until after the exam. Ideally students would just leave them at home on exam days. Students must bring with them certain equipment so they need some pens preferably a couple of black pens, pencil, rubber, ruler, calculator, protractor, any other maths equipment that they may need and it's important that they bring this in a clear plastic wallet or plastic pencil case um, just so that it can be seen through. Students need to bring their exam timetable with them uh, which they will have signed to say that the exams that are on there are the ones they should be sitting and that is their proof of identity. Students won't be allowed into an exam hall without that. Even though we know the students this is something that the exam board insists on. When students are meeting for the exams they will be told beforehand where to meet and there are always lists up around the exams office and the main crossroads corridor in the school. There's a lot of information there about exams and as I say it is very 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 important that students know this and they need to take responsibility for their exams, they need to know what to do, they need to know what to bring, they need to make sure that they are turning up at the right places and what to bring and what sort of things they should be revising and how to revise which again they will be taught to and prepped by their teachers but again they are the students exams and they need to take responsibility for them. On the student learning platform there is all this information there so if you want to read through it in more detail um, this is the place to go there's more information about policies and exam timetables once they're made available and again it would encourage you just to familiarize yourself with this so that you are aware certain students may require some form of special arrangements or special consideration these can be made in advance but you would need to contact the exams office as soon as this becomes apparent because evidence may need to be provided. This may allow students extra time or special consideration during difficult times. For any queries or questions or anything to do with special arrangements or special consideration if you contact either Mrs Smith or Mrs Ashworth in the exams office and the email address is on this slide. Hello, I'm Mr. Wet and the Head of Sixth Form, and I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking to you about Post 16 at Garforth Academy and the service that we'll be providing to Year 11 students this year to help them to make the progression to Post 16. What you can see in front of you are a number of key dates um, that work towards our Post 16 timeline. You can see that there are a number of progress meetings there. Progress meetings are where your son or daughter will meet a member of the Sixth Form team. They'll talk to us about their career aspirations and we'll give them some guidance on what they need to do in order to meet those aspirations in terms of where they need to go and the types of qualifications that they need to take. In between those progress meetings there are a number of different actions that happen that will give them some idea and firm up their course choices hopefully so we can make their guidance more specific for them. The prospectus will be handed out later this month. Some students have already taken an older copy of our prospectus away with them from the first progress meetings. 
There won't be many changes this year due to us offering the same courses. So essentially a lot of the information in the old prospectus will be the same in the new one. But when our new one is released, we will be offering that to students as well. There'll also be a virtual copy of our prospectus online. In November, normally we would have the sixth form open evening, but for obvious reasons this year, we're not going to be able to offer that due to us having to keep the number of people on site down. We are looking at doing an alternative event where students will be able to still visit subject tutors on stands and to find out different information about the courses that we offer and to be able to ask questions to the subject teachers so that they can get a good idea of the courses. Following that, they'll have another progress meeting where we can discuss if they're any further along the line with their subject choices. And then the next key date really is in February when we have our taster day. And taster day is a really crucial day for our students because it's where they come up to sixth form and have a day in the life of what sixth form would be like for them. So they choose five different options, some of which they'll be definitely sure they want to take. They may be between courses and thinking about different options that they want to take. And this will give them the chance to be in those lessons with the subject tutors and to be able to really get a feel for what the sixth form is like. Um, and hopefully it'll be something that they enjoy and will help them to decide what it is that they want to take. So then the progress meeting in February, by this time, really, we would hope that they have a pretty good idea by this time of what it is they want to do. And we can then start to put the wheels in motion for working towards those goals in September. So just to give you an idea of the sixth form team and who we are, Mr. Newstead is the Vice Principal of the Academy. He oversees outcomes at Key Stage 4 and 5, so students will already be familiar with Mr. Newstead from years 10 and 11. Uh, I'm Mr. Wetton, I'm the head of sixth form, so I'm the first port of call really for contact about sixth form. I'm supported primarily by Mr. Harris and Miss Allen, my two learning managers of year 13 and 12 respectively. We're also supported in sixth form by our careers team, which is led by Mrs. Costoya. She works primarily with UCAS, but also deals with all aspects of careers and is supported by Mrs. Brown, who also uh, deals with careers in lower school, but also with sixth form as well. Miss Mawson is our intervention mentor. She works primarily in the hubs um, and helps students in study sessions and also provides intervention where students need it. And then finally, Mrs. Rigglesworth and Mrs. Carr are our attendance officers who ensure that students are attending regularly and making sure that any absences are chased up promptly. There are a large amount of courses to choose from for students at post 16. And they include courses that students won't have had the opportunity to study before due to not being available at GCSE, things like psychology and criminology and economics. We work primarily with A-levels, but also offer other BTEC and vocational qualifications, as well as extended courses in hair and beauty and construction. We try and make our curriculum as wide as possible to offer something for everyone, no matter what they want their future career to be. And hopefully we do that and provide something for everyone. You can find a full list of our course contents in the prospectus, which also provides further details on each course, including the assessment and the types of things that are studied. As well as the prospectus, there are a number of different places that you can find information about our courses. You can find uh, a lot of information in the courses section of the post 16 page on the Academy website that's pictured here in a screen grab. Students will also be able to talk to their form tutors, a lot of whom will be teachers at post 16, and they'll be able to give them advice on what courses entail and the types of things that they'll be studying. For a lot of students as well, they will also have subject teachers for GCSE, for subjects that they want to take on at A level. So they can ask them, we would actively encourage them to ask those subject tutors about the difference between GCSE level and what the step up might look like. That's as well as speaking to progress tutors at the guidance meetings that we've already talked about. Our sixth form team know a lot about our courses and we know the different types of things that are required for students to be able to be successful in them. And obviously the prospectus is our first part of call, which we've already mentioned. Ultimately, we want as many of our year 11 students as possible to come and study with us at post 16. We feel that we have a lot to offer them and because of our familiar environment and excellent results, as well as our pastoral care, we can offer them a really good experience um, at post 16. But we also understand that there will be students who want to take courses that we don't offer at other colleges, or maybe want to pursue apprenticeships. This is absolutely fine, and this is something that we'll fully support them with. 
If they let their progress tutor know at their uh, guidance meetings, we'll be able to provide them with the help and support that they need to successfully make that next step. Ultimately, our students really do enjoy studying with us at post 16. They enjoy that extra independence that the sixth form offers and also the support that we provide. We are going to be releasing a promotional video which will involve some of our current sixth formers telling you firsthand um, what our sixth form is like and I'd thoroughly recommend that you check that out when it comes out hopefully later this month. Our results at post 16 are something that we're very proud of. Um, they're consistently the highest in the local area and they place us in the top 25% of post 16 providers nationally which includes private schools and sixth form colleges. Um, our results ultimately are down to the hard work of our teachers and our students and like I say we are really proud of them and they're something that we look to maintain year on year to stay successful and to continue to improve. Hello, my name is Mrs Costaya and I am the careers lead. Um, we have three members of staff in the careers team. We have myself and I am predominantly working with year 11 to year 13 students. Um, when the students come into sixth form, I will be supporting them with university applications, personal statements, CV writing and uh, we do quite a lot of interview practice as well. Uh, Mrs Thompson works predominantly with the year 12 and 13s and she will be looking at helping them with work experience placements while the students are in year 12 and then for year 13s it will be those students who want to look for apprenticeships. Um, we also have Mrs Brown who works with the lower school and she works mostly with the year 8 to year 10 students. Um, our office is in sixth form but obviously at the moment we are um, going to see students in lower school. So I'll next move on to the careers guidance process. So year 10 was all about students having um, a think about what subjects they might want to take um, after they finish their GCSEs. And hopefully they've been having a chat to subject tutors and researching subjects to think about what might be right for them. Now they're coming to year 11, um, the progression meetings do take place now across the year. So we've already had the first progression meeting with all students in year 11. Uh, we've had a chat to them about potentially what their career aspirations might be, if they have any. We've had a chat to them about what they're thinking around post-18 options, whether that might be university, apprenticeships or employment. And then that leads down to us talking about post-16 options. The first meeting was very general, an introduction to who we are as a progression team and just really introducing them to the type of options they might want to think about. There'll be another meeting towards the end of November and then in February we invite all students from year 11 to come up to sixth form to spend a taste a day with us and they will actually be taught subjects, level three subjects within the sixth form. If students are thinking about going to other colleges then it's still an opportunity to test out the subjects at level three and see what they think of them. Um, we then have another meeting after the taste today just to try and confirm exactly what their choices are and by results day we have a really good plan of the post 16 options for every student. Obviously, obviously if students are thinking about other pathways for example apprenticeships or other six forms uh, or colleges then we will help them with applications. So once the students are in sixth form, um, obviously they need to start thinking about what their post 18 options are. Um, all students in year 12 will complete a work experience placement at the end of year 12. And this does help to think about um, their career choices and whether they're right for them. When they get into year 13, that's when the applications start. So um, the UCAS applications will start around September time and they'll be due into us around November. We have seen last year quite a lot of students going to university. So 71% 71, 71 of our year 13s did actually go to university, which is quite a lot higher than the year before. Um, we are seeing that this increase is, is getting higher and higher each year. 
we are we are seeing some students go on to study apprenticeships and there are some fantastic degree level apprenticeships out there so we are encouraging our students to look at those as well and um, some students are going into full-time work some students are wanting to take a gap year and we do have a small minority of students who want to continue or finish their studies um, as a year 14 gap of the academy student Hello, I'm Mrs Young, the Principal. It's really important that you have confidence and believe in yourself. This is one of the main things that holds people back. We absolutely know that you can do amazing things when you have a positive attitude and believe you can do it. We believe in each and every one of you, so please make sure that you believe in yourself. We strongly encourage all students to ensure that they are prepared for their exams whether they are mocks or my real exams. This is even more important in the current situation where performance throughout the year may need to be used. It is much easier to remain calm and focused if you have a clear plan and don't leave everything to the last minute. There is a lot to learn and you need to give yourself time to learn your course content and also to ensure you know what you are being asked to do, what is in the specification, what gains marks and how to answer questions. Mocks allow you to practice this and get help and support from your teachers to learn from what went well and what you need to improve on. Use mark schemes to help you work out what you need to write in order to get marks. Little and often is the key. If you were to do an extra hour of study every night for the next year of year 11, then by the end of the year, you would have actually done an extra 280 hours of work, which equates to seven weeks. So start now and don't leave it until the end of year 11 and then try and cram it all in, which is much more stressful. It is important to make a plan and have a revision timetable so that you know what you need to do in the time that you have available. It's really important that your plan is realistic. So you must plan in social events. If you know that you're going to be going out for the day on a Saturday, then don't plan to do any revision because otherwise you're immediately going to be behind. You also need to make sure that you plan breaks. You can't do three or four hours of revision all in one go and have no break because you will find that that time isn't effective. It's really important that when you've made a plan, you do stick to it and that it is quality revision time and you've put that mobile phone away. But remember, above all, you can only ever do your best and that is all we will ever ask of you. There are lots of different ways that you can revise and it's really important that you find a method that works for you. Don't just do what your friends are doing if it isn't having an impact on you. You have done exams lower down in the school, make sure that you continue to use methods that work for you and if what you did in year 10 didn't work, then try something different. It is really important that you look after yourself and seek support if and when you need to. We are always here to help you. Planning an organisation really help you to limit your stress and keep on top of what you need to do. It's really important that you also plan fun things to do that you enjoy. You can't work 24 seven. Plan breaks, time out with friends and family, although I know that's more difficult in the current situation, so it might need to be done remotely. Make sure you get plenty of sleep and do some physical exercise, as this will really help. If you feel yourself getting overwhelmed or are worried, then please seek help and advice. There are lots of places you can turn to for help. You are never on your own. MindMate is an excellent online resource which gives advice and support if you need to speak to someone who is neutral. But there are also lots of people in school who can help you. There's your form tutor, your teachers and your learning manager. Please make sure you do speak to someone if you feel you need some extra help. COOF is also available to young people. It is free, safe and anonymous and is available outside of normal school hours. You are able to seek support from trained counsellors who can give you help and advice. The next year will be an ongoing project, but it is a partnership between us at school and you at home and we are always here to offer support and advice, so please do not hesitate to get in contact if necessary. Finally, thank you for viewing this presentation. 
it's been very disappointing that we have not been able to welcome you into the academy as we would normally do for this evening but we hope it has been informative all the same and we wish you the very best of luck for this year.